Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube live stream tour portions. My name is Adam, and I welcome you or welcome you back. And uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, by the way. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day of the week that we look forward to every week uh, in observance of the fourth commandment and a day separate unto Yahuwah Sevaot. So uh, this week we are on week 38, and it is Korah. And uh, we will be doing um, basically chapters 16, 17, and 18. And uh, let's see here. Give me just a moment. Uh, here we go. Yep. Nope. That's not right. In any case, I apologize. <laughs> I'm just pulling up my notes here. But um, so if, if you're new by chance, what we do here is we go through the Torah portions line by line. Uh, just talk about it, you know, and because... Uh, what we're doing here on this walk is we are learning how to walk in Torah. For a lot of us, probably 99% of us, we uh, we didn't grow up with Torah. Uh, some of us may even have grown up with Torah, but maybe from a Judaism, Judaism perspective, that's totally wrong. So uh, most of us are learning this walk from a brand new um, uh, um place in our life and uh, we're just doing our best to, to walk in this and uh, I'm a student of the Torah so I am uh, inviting you to be my study partner as we go through these Torah portions and grow thereby so let me just pull up the book of numbers we're going to be reading from the Sefer version and uh, we'll be cross-referencing with other versions as well so let's uh, let's pray and we'll get right into it so let's bow our hearts Heavenly Father Yahuwah Most High, we just come before you in Yahusha's name, and we just thank you truly for salvation uh, by the redemption of uh, the blood of Messiah Yahusha and being washed by your word and growing every day. And Abba, we just pray that you open our eyes to behold the wondrous matters out of your Torah, that we may grow thereby and produce the fruit that you are looking for from us. And we just bless you in Yahusha's mighty name. Amen and Amen. So this week is, uh, again, week 38, Korah, or Korach, uh, and it's all about the rebellion of Korah and uh, those that were joined unto him. And last week, if you remember, we ended with uh, the commandment of the, the Zitzit. And if you didn't watch that, um, at the, uh, just read the end of uh, the book of uh, chapter, uh, the, the end of chapters 15 of Numbers, and it's got the commandment for the children of Israel. And some of you asked, yes, that's for men and women uh, to wear uh, zitzit on the borders of their garments. And um, it's interesting that this rebellion comes right after that commandment is given. And as we'll see, uh, what comes out of Korah's mouth, he's like, you know, you've gone too far, Moses. You know, and uh, could he could he have been just been too upset about this commandment for ZC? He's like, now we got to put these strings on our on our uh, you know, on the borders of our garments. You know, uh, you've gone too far, Moses. I'm I'm tired of you. Uh, we're doing an, we're doing an uprising over you. So, um, is it connected? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but it is interesting nonetheless. So let's uh, let's get into it and um, yeah, let's get into it. So, Numbers chapter 16. Now, Korach, the son of Yitzchar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Aviram, the sons of Eliav, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, Reuben right, took men. Now, let's real quick, let's slow down. Like, who is uh, Korah? He is Moses and Aaron's cousin. They're closely related. Who is Korah? Korah. Exodus 6.18, and the sons of Kohath, right? So that's the same here, uh, Kohath, right? So the sons of Kohath, Amram, which is the father of uh, Moses and uh, Aaron, and Ishar, and Hebron, and Uziel. So, um, so you got Kohath, right? So this is the son of Levi, and then his son Izhar. Right, Yitzchar or Izar, right? So, um, so Izhar is Moses and Aaron's uncle, and so Korah is their cousin, right? 
And these rose up before Moshe with certain of the children of Yashrael, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the assembly, men of renown. So they, they took popular people with them, right? They're like, we're going to we're gonna get some... Uh, um, we're going to get some strength with us, is what Korah and uh, these sons of Reuben decided to do. And this is what they said. And they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Aharon and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. Which, if you look at other translations, kind of more modern translations, uh, it's like it says, they all say, You've gone too far, Moses, right? Ye take too much upon you. You've gone too far seeing all the assembly are holy, every one of them, and Yahuwah is among them. Wherefore, then you lift up yourselves above the assembly of Yahuwah. So what is what is Korah charging them with, right, for going too far? And Korah has declared that all the assembly are holy, right? He's like, they're all holy, every one of them. And Yahuwah is among them, right? So why do you lift up yourselves above, uh, above the assembly, right? So it's like, you know, Korah is declaring righteousness, right? It reminds me of this, uh, uh, we talked about this last year, the, the name it and claim it movement, you know, and, and shouldn't, you know, shouldn't Yahuwah declare who is holy and who's not? Like, I don't think any one of us can be like, you know, oh, you're holy, oh, we're all holy, you know. Yahuwah declares who's holy, you know, his Torah declares who's holy, right? And when Moshe heard it, he fell upon his face. Wait, what a humble man, right? And he, sp- and he spoke unto Korach and unto his all his company saying, even tomorrow, Yahuwah will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. So Moshe, rightly so, he's saying, uh, tomorrow, Yahuwah will show who are his and who is holy. Not you, Korah, right? Um, and there came out a fire from Yahuwah and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Gone. Just like that, right? This do take you censors, Korach, and all his company. Whoa, wait a minute. Uh, I think there's, let's see. Have an issue? Yeah, we got a problem. Oops, sorry about that. We got a problem with the Sefer version. Yeah, because this is not till later. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Why Why are they being consumed when they haven't even been... All right, we'll just read out the KJV then. Sorry about that. So we'll start back here. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and all his company, saying, Even tomorrow Yahweh will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before Yahuwah tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom Yahuwah doth choose, he shall be holy. And then he's like, right, you've gone too far, right? You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moshe said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, you sons of Levi, seem it but a small thing unto you that the Elohim of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of of Yahuwah and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them, right? He's like, this is a huge honor and you guys are just acting like, you know, it's not enough. You, You know, you want more. And he hath brought you near unto him and all your brethren, the sons of Levi with you, and you seek the priesthood also? Because the priesthood was the 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 ones in charge, the rulers. For which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against Yahuwah? And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? Right? He's like, why? He's like, Moshe's like, why? Wh- what's your problem with Aaron? Right? And Moshe sent to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Right? These you know, like, they're just prideful. We're not going to come up. Right? Is a small thing that you has brought it. Like you can see this just back and forth, right? They're like using each other's words. Like Korah's like, "You've gone too far," and Moses is like, "You've gone too far," and Moshe's like, 
Is it a small thing, you know? And so Nathan and Abiram, is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Is that, you know, because Egypt was a, a land flowing with milk and honey. There's a lot of lands flowing with milk, milk and honey. There's a verse somewhere, milk of the uh, land flowing with milk and honey is the glory of all, of all lands, right? All fertile lands. Um, right? So brought us up out of a land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make yourself altogether a prince over us. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? This is kind of random. He's like talking all these things. He's like, you know, take their eyes out too, right? We will not come up. And Moshe was very wroth and said unto Yahuwah, respect, respect not their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before Yahuwah, you and they and Aharon tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before Yahuwah every man his censer, 250 censers, you also, and Aharon, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moshe and Aharon. And Korah gathered all gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto all the congregation and Yahuwah spake unto Moshe and unto Aharon saying separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment right and again we've spoke we spoke about this before Yahuwah knew no knew who he picked with Moshe right he knew Moshe would be um you know, humble and meek and um, just even when these people probably deserved it, Moshe was like, no, 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 right? So what did they do? They fell upon their faces and said, oh, Elohim, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and will you be wroth with all the congregation? Right? They could have been, they could have been like, you know what, the whole, the whole congregation's against us and they want to kill us. Fine, Yahweh, kill them. You know, we'll start over, right? And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moshe rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they get up from... My cat... Sorry. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moshe said, Hereby ye shall know that Yahuwah hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done it of mine own mind. And you know, it's amazing that Moshe would still have to deal with these people. I mean, really think about this. And this is probably why Yahuwah was like, you know, I'm going to just consume them. I mean, think about it. These people saw all the plagues in, in Egypt, right? Um, they saw how they were protected and everybody else was harmed. None of their stuff was touched. Um, you know, the Passover, uh, the, all the firstborn of Egypt being slain, but nobody of Israel being touched. Uh, you know, coming out of the wilderness or coming out of Egypt and, and the, I mean, the Red Sea parting, right? And uh, I'm just so many things like the, the hitting the rock and the water coming out. And oh my goodness. I mean, the, uh, like, think about like the, the, you know, the pillar of cloud leading them by day and the fire, by, the pillar of fire by night. I mean, it's just like, like how, how are they even like questioning anything anymore? They should, should have all just zipped it. And been like, wow, okay, Moses, you're, you know, you are our intercessor, you know, essentially at that point, um, you know, tell us what to do. We'll listen, you know, which they said, but then they didn't do. Uh, no wonder why Yahweh was like, all these, all their carcasses are going to fall in this wilderness, all of them, you know, except for the children. I, I, I get it. I understand, you know. So again, Moshe said, Hereby ye shall know that Yahuwah sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Yahuwah has not sent me. I think the rest of this is good from here. I really like reading the suffer.
Yeah, then Yahuwah has not sent me. But if Yahuwah make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Yahuwah. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. Right, so the ground opened up, right? And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korach and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the assembly. And all Yashrael that were round about them fled at the cry of them for they said, lest the earth, lest the earth swallow us up also. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls. Let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offer them before Yahuwah. Therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Yashrael. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Yashrael, that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aharon, come near to offer incense before Yahuwah, that he be not as Korach, and as his company, as Yahuwah said to him by the hand of Moshe. Right? And that was like one of the, the sins of thinking about King Saul and one of the reasons that he was just, you know, done with being, you know, removed from being king. You know, like all these things are, are very, Yahweh was very particular, like, you know, who comes near the assembly, who offers the sacrifices, you know, um, everybody has its order to it. And, you know, Saul was just like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to offer up this, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do it, you know, because um, Samuel was running late. You know, on purpose, I guess. But uh, Saul was just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna do this." So, um, I've the reason I'm saying this is because I, I've been approached by people that, that have said that, you know, we can do because, you know, the Melchizedek priesthood, and you know, we can do our own sacrifices now. And whoa, whoa, whoa! Pump the brakes. Be very careful. But on the morrow, all the assembly of the children of Yashrael murmured against Moshe and against Aharon, saying, Ye have killed the people of Yahuwah. Right? They just still just don't get it. Right? And it came to pass, when the assembly was gathered against Moshe and against Aharon, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the assembly, and, behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared. And Moshe and Aharon came before the tabernacle of the assembly, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Get you up from among this assembly, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. So here it is again, right? Yahuwah's like, all right, I'm just done with these people. And Moshe was like, wait, wait, no. And Moshe said unto El Aharon, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the assembly, and make an atonement for them. For their wrath has gone out from Yahuwah. The plague is begun. And Aharon took as Moshe commanded, and ran into the midst of the assembly. And, behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on the incense, and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. And that's an interesting statement, right? Aharon, the high priest, was between the stood between the dead and the living, right? Because like, kind of like as an inner, intercessor, inner. Um, What's the word I'm thinking of? Um, yeah, intercessor, I guess. Just like, you know, like Yahusha, our eternal high priest now, is uh, doing the same. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korach. And Aharon returned unto Moshe, unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and the plague was stayed. Oh, yeah, one, thing, um, one thing I want to bring up in verse 26, is it? Right? Verse 26, And he spoke unto the assembly, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all our sins. It reminds me of Revelation 18.4, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye not be partakers of her sins, and that ye not receive of her plagues. So, um, you know, what, what was Korach's sin? It was, you know, disobedience. It was 
rising ag- rising up against you know um, rising up and being rebellious right it's that's why it's called Korah's rebellion um, and what's you know the world involved in rebellion even even Christianity even modern day Christianity they are in rebellion why because they're not keeping his commandments that's rebellion come out of her that you receive out of her plagues also um, verse 30 right um, was it verse 30 here oh or was I trying to put it here oh yeah he put I uh, put on incense and made an atonement for the people let me fix this I don't know why I've got verse 30 there on my notes 47. This is actually a verse I wanted to share in the Revelation live stream. But, um, you know, speaking about offerings and incense now, um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is Daniel 9. Yeah. Daniel 9.27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So a lot of people would say, oh, you know, that's the third temple um, being built, and they're going to offer sacrifices again, and then it's going to be cut off. No, no, no. That wouldn't even be his sacrifices and oblations. Um, That would be an abomination to him. But what is his current sacrifice and oblation or uh, sacrifices and drink offerings or meat offerings. Uh, what is that today? Psalm 141, 1 through 2. Yahuwah, I cry unto you. Make haste unto me. Give give ear unto my voice when I cry unto you. Now listen. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. That, I believe, brothers and sisters, is, is what that is to be cut out, to be removed in Daniel 9. Revelation 5 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Revelation 8 3 through 5. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne, right? So the prayers are that offering. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up for Elohim out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So, anyways. All right, so I think we're good with the rest of this in the Sefer, yeah. Okay, uh, chapter 17. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write you every man's name upon his rod. And you shall write Aharon's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And you shall lay them up in the tabernacle of the assembly before the testimony, where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that when the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Yashrael, whereby they murmur against you. Again, why he has to do this. This is long suffering with the people, with his people, giving him sign after sign after sign after sign. You know, it reminds me about. Maybe why he may look so kindly upon us in these last days. But I really do not like this new Bible Gateway version. Here we go. Uh, Two Ezra's chapter 1. Verse 35, I will give your houses to a people that will come who without having heard me will believe, right? We didn't hear his voice on Mount Sinai, right? 
to those to whom I have shown no signs will do what I have commanded. They have seen no prophets, yet will recall their former state. I call to witness the gratitude of the people that is to come, whose children rejoice with gladness, though they do not see me with bodily eyes, yet with the Ruach they will believe the things I have said. Amen. Praise be to Yahuwah. So again, he's showing them another sign, just sign after sign after sign. These people's hearts are so hardened that I get why Yahuwah is furious with them. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Yashrael, whereby they murmur against you. And Moshe spoke unto the children of Yashrael, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece, for each prince one according to their father's house, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aharon was among their rods. And Moshe laid up the rods before Yahuwah in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moshe went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aharon for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. That's awesome. And Moshe brought out all the rods from before Yahuwah unto the children of Yashrael, and they looked and took every man his rod. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Bring Aharon's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a sign against the sons of rebellion. And you shall quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. And Moshe did so, as Yahuwah commanded him, so did he. And the children of Yashrael spoke unto Moshe, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever comes anything near unto the tabernacle of Yahweh shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? Just always, just, oh man, just whining and... You know, I wonder how much of this we're doing. You know, we whine and complain and, you know, I don't know. Maybe we should really take this to heart about this time in the wilderness because we're like in a spiritual wilderness right now so are we just as whiny as these people i hope not i really hope not you know the rod the importance of the rod i mean think about think about aaron's rod moshe's rod aaron's rod we see the rod becoming a snake and then becoming a rod again. The rod was used to turn the water into blood, which also was used to bring forth the frogs, the lice, the hail, the locusts. I and mean, we know that was all Yahuwah, but you know that was like the medium, right? The, the, the rod was raised alongside the waters of the Red Sea to be parted. The rod was used to strike the rock to bring forth the water, right? A symbol of Yahusha. Uh, you know, speaking of this rod, but maybe in a future context, we read this earlier in the revelation stream uh, psalm 2 9 you shall break them with a rod of iron that shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel and then of course the promise to us revelation 2 25 through 29 but that which ye have already hold fast till i come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as i received of my father so praise be to you for that and one thing I forgot to read, uh, I want to share with you at the end of chapter 16 about Korah. The only other mention we have of Korah, it does tell us, right, Numbers 26, 11, which we'll read in a few weeks, notwithstanding the children of Korah died not. So it was apparently just Korah and his belongings that went down, and, but it looks like his family was uh, preserved. So righteous is the judgment of Yahuwah. So... In any case, all right, so um, let's see. Okay, Numbers 18, 1. And again, this is uh, chapter 18 is um, the end of this portion. So we're going to read through this, discuss it a little bit. And uh, we will uh, sing the song of Moshe. And we're going to be done. And we're going to resume our Shabbaton and Shalomin. And for probably for a lot of us, uh, those of you at least that are watching this live, uh, sleeping. <laughs> so Numbers 18.1. And Yahweh said unto El Aharon, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. So, you know, why would it say that, um, you know, bearing the iniquity? We have to remember that uh, you know, the priests 
were not perfect. They had sin as well. Leviticus 16, 11, and, and Aharon shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Uh, this is the... Um, so, you know, he had atoned for himself, and then he could atone for the people, just like we see uh, is like, uh, what is it, in the, the Day of Atonement, right? So Aharon's got to um, offer up something for himself first, then he can offer it up for the people. 18.2, And your brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring with you, that they may be joined unto you and minister unto you. But you and your sons with you shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. And they shall guard your watch, and the watch of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. And they shall be joined unto you, and guard the watch of the tabernacle of the assembly. For all the service of the tabernacle, and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. And ye shall guard the watch of the sanctuary, and the watch of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Yashrael. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Leviim, from among the children of Yashrael. To you they are given as a gift for Yahuwah to do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. Therefore, you and your sons with you shall guard your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And Yahweh spoke unto El Aharon, Behold, I also have given you the charge of my heave offerings of all the hallowed things of the children of Yashrael. Unto you I have given them by reason of the anointing, and to your sons by an ordinance forever. This shall be yours of the most holy things, reserved from the fire. Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for you and for your sons. Right? So, like, these part, part of these sacrifices that were for Yahuwah, right, they were given to uh, the Levites, they were given to the priests. And the most holy place shall you eat it, every male shall eat it, it shall be holy unto you. And this is yours, the heave offering of their gift with all the wave offering of the children of Yashrael. I have given them unto you and to your sons and to your daughters with you by a statute forever. Everyone that is clean in your house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto Yahuwah, them have they given to you. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto Yahuwah, shall be yours. Everyone that is clean in your house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Yashrael shall be yours. Everything that opens the womb in all flesh, which they bring unto Yahuwah, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be yours. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall you surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shall you redeem. So, you know, again, these priests, the the Levites and the priests, they were the leaders uh, of Israel, of Yashrael. And as it says right here, right, uh, all the best. They got all the best. They got the best of the wine, the best of the oil, the best of the wheat, uh, the first fruits. They all were for all were for them. So they served Yahuwah and they served the children of Israel. Right? Because remember, what did Yahusha say? He's like, if you want to be leader among the people, then you need to serve. What did the Levites do? They served. They led, but they also served. And for serving, they were rewarded handsomely. Verse 16, And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall you redeem according to your estimation for the money of five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty giras. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood upon the altar. You shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire, for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the flesh of them shall be yours, as the wave breast and as the right shoulder are yours. All the heave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Yashrael offer unto Yahuwah, have I given to you and your sons and your daughters with you by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before Yahuwah unto you and to your seed with you. 
And Yahweh spoke unto El Ahron, You shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any part among them. I am your part and your inheritance among the children of Yashrael. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Yashrael for an inheritance, for their service which they serve even the service of the tabernacle of the assembly, right? So all the Levites got a tenth, uh, the tithe, that's your tithes, right? That's a tenth of um, uh, all their, uh, again, the oil, wine, crops. Neither must the children of Yashrael henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the assembly, lest they bear their sin and die. But the Leviim shall do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Yashrael they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Yashrael, which they offer as a heave offering unto Yahuwah, I have given to the Leviim to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Yashrael they shall have no inheritance. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Thus speak unto the Levim, to the Levites, right? And say unto them, When ye take of the children of Yashrael the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering of it for Yahuwah, even a tenth part of the tithe. So, they had the tithe, 10% of the tithe, right? A tithe of a tithe, a tenth of a tenth. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the grain of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the winepress. Thus also shall thus ye shall I'm sorry, thus ye also shall offer a heave offering unto Yahuwah of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Yashrael, and ye shall give thereof of Yahuwah's heave offering to Aharon the priest. So the Levites got a tenth, and the priests got a tenth of the tenth. Out of all your gifts ye shall Offer every heave offering of Yahuwah, of all the best thereof, even the hallowed part thereof, out of it. Therefore you shall say unto them, When ye heaved the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Leviim as the increase of the threshing floor and as the increase of the winepress. And ye shall eat it in every place, you and your households, for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the assembly. And ye shall bear no sin by reason of it when ye have heaved it, Heaved it, I'm sorry, heaved from it the best of it. Neither shall you pollute the holy things of the children of Yisrael, lest you die. Right? So he's saying, like, if you don't, you don't, uh, if you are greedy, you're not going to, you know, tie the tenth of your tenth. Then you know you're you're polluting it in, um, lest you die. So, pretty serious stuff. So, uh, again, the the priesthood was. Uh, you know, was for Aaron and his descendants. The high priest, no doubt, is the clear-cut leader of Israel. In this temporary time, you know, Moshe was, but truly after that, the, the high priest was uh, the leader uh, for the rest of the times. Just uh, like how it is, you know, with Yahusha, right? So it holds true with Yahusha. He is the the high priest, and he is our leader. He is the king of kings. Um, so praise be to Yah for him. But uh, I don't, uh, it's kind of a short, um, short, you know, portion Um Again, you know, the main part of this was Korah and his rebellion. And, uh, you know, leadership is is a lot less defined right now than how it was back then. They had a clear-cut leadership. You know, we're all in dispersion right now. We don't have, you know, a tabernacle. <laughs> we don't. Well, you know, Messiah Yahusha is the tabernacle, right? But uh, I'm just saying, like, we don't have, we're, we're kind of scattered all over the place. And, you know, it's hard to, you know, recognize these different things. But, you know... At all times, you know, Yahuwah has um, leadership. He has a structure. He has order. Um, but most importantly, we have to remember, we are not to rebel against Yahuwah's command. And uh, it was by Yahuwah's command that Moshe was leader. And these people rebelled against that. So we got to just take that in remembrance for pretty much anything in Torah that we can possibly keep. Uh, let us not have rebellious hearts and be like Korah and uh, and suffer loss like he does like he did but uh, let us be obedient brothers and sisters and i know a lot of us are new to this and we're really just like babies just waking up learning how to do this and that's why i, I really believe yahuwah is going to have paid a lot of mercy and patience with us um you know those israelites of old had no excuse they grew up with this they knew this from from birth uh this was the way of life this was the way um, th this was this truth of the Torah was hidden for, you know, almost two thousand years, and it's just now 
coming about, you know, the last what for the majority of people waking up the last three years, some people five, 10, maybe even 20. Some people have been walking this out for 20, 30 years, but uh, in mass, you know, this is, this is that time. It's what's so beautiful about uh, what's going on right now is uh, quite frankly, Deuteronomy 30 is the promise and t- kind of tells us where we're at in time. Uh, I'll just read uh, verses one through three and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse, right? We're still suffering part of that curse, the dispersion, which I have set before you and you shall call them to mind among all the nations where the Yahuwah has driven you. So starting to call to mind all these uh, ways that we've transgressed him um, in our dispersion and you will remember and you shall return unto Yahweh your Elohim and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day right so coming back to his Torah you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul that then so when this happens then Yahweh your Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion on you and will return and gather you from all the nations whether Yahweh your Elohim has scattered you so that's the promise and quite frankly I am excited for that, and I, I hope it, I hope it happens soon. So, anyways, brothers and sisters, I uh, I pray that uh, the this reading of Korach was a blessing to you. But more importantly, I pray it was a blessing to uh, Yahuwah, that this was a sweet savor before him, that uh, a group of people are waking up and loving him by belief in his son and by keeping his commandments and um, wanting to learn from the Torah and to just get better at this every day. Um, Yeah, so anyways, soon, soon, soon. So let's let's pray. Let's uh, do the priestly priestly blessing, the Song of Moshe, and let's get on with our Shabbat, right? So, let's bow our hearts. Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, Most High, we just come before you again in Yahusha's name. We pray that this gathering was a, even though it be online, we pray that this attempt to gather together and to study your Torah was a pleasing aroma before you. Because, Abba, truly what's on our heart is to please you and to glorify you and to sing you praises and to just wonder at your creation that you created through your word, through Yahusha. All things were created by him, and we're just so amazed at your creation. We are anxiously awaiting so that we can be with you, well, so that righteousness may reign on this earth and not wickedness as it is right now. Abba, please protect our eyes and our ears and our hearts from this world, that we not be tainted with it anymore, and that we can be pure and kodesh and set apart unto you. Abba, we love you, and we just pray that you continue to open our ear, open our eyes and ears to the wonders, matters of your Torah, and quite frankly, all your word. We love you, and we bless you, and we're anxious to see you. Amen and amen. So, Yevarechecha Yahweh vereshmerecha Yaer Yahweh panav elecha vechneka Yesa Yahweh panav elecha veyashem lecha shalom Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Brothers and sisters, hey, Shabbat Shalom to you. And uh, we're going to part with the song of Moshe, which hopefully you're starting to memorize by now. Uh, it just tickles my heart that my uh, my son, my four-year-old son, uh, can sing the whole thing. Uh, my Two and a half year old daughter, uh, she's getting there, but uh, uh, little Daniel, uh, man, it just pleases me that he can sing this song and it just warms my heart. And uh, hopefully by now, some of you that uh, uh, listen week by week, maybe by now you're starting to uh, memorize it yourself. So uh, what a time, what a time when, when people are, are singing the song of Moshe. I think, I think there's something uh, pretty prophetic about this. Uh, praise be to Yah that he put it on Alan Horvath's heart to uh, to sing this. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to say it. She doesn't like recognition in the congregation, but I'm going to give it anyways. Uh, really thankful to Yahuwah for her sister Camilla, who is in the chat right now, uh, that put it on her heart to show this song to me. And uh, I think she had and I had an idea uh, from Yahuwah that uh, we were going to put this into a video and uh, make it into like a music video. So 
I'm very thankful for thank very thankful for those two. And uh so yeah. Praise be to you. So with that, brothers and sisters, hey, Shabbat Shalom and uh we will uh we'll see you next week. Yeah willing, of course. All right, Shabbat Shalom. I sing to Yahuwah, for He is highly exalted. The horse and its rider He has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and He has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise Him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath, it consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake I divide the spoil My being is satisfied on them I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them you blew with your wind the sea covered them they sank like lead in the mighty waters who is like you oh Yahuwah among the mighty ones who is like you great Kodesha, awesome in praises, working wonders. You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them all the inhabitants of Canaan. Melted, fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, O oh, Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, O oh, Yahuwah which you have made for your own dwelling. The meek 
Kadash, O Yahuwah, which your hands have prepared. Yahuwah reigns forever and ever.